Hey, and welcome to the show. This show is brought to you by Patreon members like you. Thank you for being a Patreon member. As a Patreon member, you get a video of the podcast that we put out twice a month. Now, on with the show. Okay. Let's go. try again. All right, so we hey. got a microphone. Hey. All right, can you hear us now? Uh, what's up from Kentucky? Can you hear me now? No audio. All right, I know. Check the sound now. We should have sound now. Yeah. All right, if we don't have sound now, we're shutting it down and going home. Still? Still. No audio. Not, wait. We'll turn up your volume on your thing, and that'll tell you if we have sound. Yeah. All right, so we have sound. Okay, better. All right, there we go. Ah, there you go. Got to turn on the mics, man. Turned off the air compressor. Shut off the TV. And I forgot my mic. Okay. It's okay, man. We were busy. We Jay. had a lot of stuff to set up. So uh, Robert, Josh. So we have a today. We got we got an educational show for you, right? Oh boy, we're gonna do math. Who doesn't like to do math? So the reason why we have the TV behind us is because one of the questions that we talked about Saturday and we get asked a lot mm -hmm. is about power wire and fusing. I mean, what size fuse should I put on my power wire? What size power wire should I run? And so we thought today. Check, check, loud and clear. Ooh, What's that, that was a good one, Johnny. I like that. Very good. Um, so we thought today we'd take a little bit of time and we're going to go over what it is that is power wire and fusing and talk about a couple different things that have to do with those. Mm -hmm. We have a whole setup over here on the bench that we're going to display here on the screen. And then we're, so it's it's a lot of fun. What's that, Matt, Jason? I like math. Really? I don't. I it's don't a pain like in the math. butt. No. Yes. So that's the plan. That's the plan we got going on. All depends on power requirements. We mean the math, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went to a uh, a car stereo show this weekend. Yes, you so, did. Yeah. So um, there was one yeah. here in Tampa. A competition. Yeah, it was competition from. Uh, I don't know. It was SQR. Ayaska. Ayaska and. Yeah, Ayaska and Mecca. It was both okay. Ayaska and Mecca. Okay. <sighs> Just throw out, just everything should get zero gauge. Yeah, that's easy. <laughs> Problem solved. Problem yeah, solved. Everything exactly. should get zero gauge. Anyways, Jeff was a judge. Yeah. Um, a buddy of mine it was at a buddy of mine's shop, Andrew. Hey, Chicago. So we got to, we just hung Aaron out in, in the Chicago. parking lot, sweat uh -huh. our butts off, and that was that. Hey, Aaron. Chicago, bang, bang. Yeah. Ha. <sighs> yes, math does suck. But math is going to be fun because we're going to work some cool numbers here. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the camera and we're gonna get started because like anything else, we just don't wanna talk about this stuff all night long. It's gonna be no fun. It's gonna be fun. No, I mean, it'll be fun. Do so you let, record? Yes, thank you. Let me let me zoom in a little bit here and let me, let me we're, uh, no, we're gonna talk bit, about what bit. we got going on. Let me, give me one second. Let me, let me, uh, right, there. right there. Right there. All right, right there. so you guys should be able to see what we're looking at. So we're looking at the bench. You guys are familiar with the bench. Uh -huh. let, me, let me get this a little better. All right, that's better. good. Oh, that works. Yep, perfect. That's better, right? Yep, that's, yeah, better. that's better. Yep. All right, so what we have going on the bench here is this formula here, which is going to be our Watts law. So we have power, we have current, and we have volts, which is E. And this is where it gets confusing because P is power, makes sense. E is volts, doesn't make sense. And I is current. That doesn't make sense. Those are confusing. But what we want to figure out was the most basic one, which is current equals power divided by voltage. This is the normal one right here that we'd figure out. So what we'd do is we'd say, all right, power. If we have a 200 watt amp and we're at 13.5, divide those two and whatever this gives us <laughs> is going to be the actual fuse rating. That's but the added. problem with that is that efficiency screws that all up, meaning amps aren't 100% efficient. So how much power does the amplifier actually consume to make that 200 watts? And that I think today is where we're gonna have a little bit of fun. And so what we have set up is a, is a clamp, which we're going to set to DC amperage. And we have a digital multimeter here that is gonna be connected to the voltage coming into the amplifier over here. So we're gonna be able to see that. And then we have another voltmeter here, which is going to be set to AC, which is going to tell us the actual power coming out of the amplifier. Because what we're going to do today is we're going to look at how much power is coming out into the, I'm sorry, how much power is coming into this amplifier and how much power is coming out of this amplifier. Now this, guys, you should all recognize this. This is that cool load resistor bank that we made. This has four 
4 ohm, 100 watt resistors in it. And the 4 ohm thing is important. Hey, John. So what we're going to be figuring out today, which if I can get this to work, which I probably can't. So we'll come over here and it's white on white, which totally stinks. So we need to know the power of the clamp. We need to know the voltage coming out into the amplifier, you know, 13, whatever. We need to know the output voltage. We need to know the ohm load. With those four things, we can figure out everything we need to know. So, to do this, we're going to be using the cool phone over here. We're going to play a test tone. It's going to be 1,000 hertz coming into the amplifier. We've already gone ahead and set the gains on the amplifier for clip. This audio control ACM amplifier has two clip lights right here on it, so we know we're good there. You do have to do that. We're going to turn on our 50 amp power supply that we have to power this whole thing up, and we're going to take all four or these three readings, the fourth one we already know, which we've said is 4 ohm. All right, let's do this. We'll come over here, type in a password, get out of that. All right, Fernando, all it's right. your turn to shine. All right, so we can ahead. only turn this power supply on for a brief moment. All right, you let me know. Yeah, go. Ready? Yep. Oh, let's press play. Make sure we're here. Tone generator. Press play. All right, so we got our 1,000 hertz test tone going right here. Let's see it. All right, so on the clamp, we're getting 21.8 amps of current draw. We're getting 13.4 volts out of our power supply into our amplifier at load. And we're getting 16.4, so this is volts DC, this is volts AC. So we have 13.4 volts DC coming into the amplifier. We have 16.4 volts AC coming out of the amplifier here, thanks to our load resistor. Okay, now this thing is gonna get hot. It's gonna do all kinds of fun stuff. So we're just gonna go ahead and shut it down. Shut down. All right. Let's zoom back out and let the whole little color white balance thingy do what it needs to do to get back to normal. Again? Nah, it's probably gonna be screwed up to the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, Looks yeah. like 12 anyway. volt Frankenstein. It is, it there's is. a lot of silliness. And I have a headache too. Oh yeah, we, I, yeah, I totally give Fernando a headache about the whole thing. Like, oh. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna take this information that we just got. What's our mail? Which is hey, from these, these numbers we just wrote down. And we're going to go ahead and throw these into these equations to figure out what's going on. And then, don't worry, it gets more exciting. Not much, but a little bit more. <laughs> so if we... What's up, Bismarck? All right, let's get out of that. We're going to go to the calculator. Where is the calcu oh, yeah, calculator? Duh. All right, so let me, let me zoom in. So no, you don't have to see. zoom in. It's OK, because we're going to talk the whole time. So that's more fun. Because it's a calculator, everyone can do. All right, so the first thing we want to figure out is, obviously we could just go ahead and figure out what current is, and that would be power, but it's supposed power. We don't actually know the power yet, because it's a four, it, the amplifier is rated for 200 watts at four ohm. Four ohm, yeah. 50 watts by four per channel. So if we just throw that generic number in here, we're gonna get a generic answer. We don't want a generic answer, we want the, the real answer. So we need to figure out for power. We need to figure out how many watts this bad boy is taking in. So we wanna take our current and we're gonna multiply it by our voltage. So real fast, that was, for those of you playing at home, that was 21.8 we'll Bobby. times 13.4 equals 192.12. 200. That's what I said. <laughs> yep. All right, so that's going to give us 292.12. So that's how much power this amplifier is consuming to create whatever power it's putting out. What's up, Carl? But since we have that number now, which we've just solved for P, we can now go back into our equation and we could solve for current, even though, we, even though we know the current because we just saw it on the clamp, but that's okay. We're still gonna play along with numbers because that's a lot of fun. So power divided by voltage is gonna give us our current, which is gonna give us that same number of uh, 21.8. So we'll go back and we'll, we'll reverse this out. We'll clear it and we'll go power 292.12. 
290.2 yeah. divided by 13.4. Hey, look at that. It gives us the answer of 21.8, which is what the clamp was giving us. So if you have a clamp, this is the clamp. If you have a clamp, DC, you can put it on there. You can see what it has. Now, one thing to consider while we're doing all this is that this is under ideal circumstances. This is playing one test tone. We're not in a car. The voltage is fixed. This is more or less just to show you the math because in a car, you're going to have things happening. You're going to be playing music, which moves and, and, and draws more current and less current. And so things are going to happen. So this is all just conceptual as far as this is the stuff you have to do to figure out these things. Uh, Fernando, want to buy? Yeah. Same email that we have, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the same email, Bismarck. Thank you, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, v for voltage, R for resistance, but, 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 I for current, but, 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 Y, P. I, I don't know, right? It's stupid, and that's what drives me crazy. But, hey, sometimes you got to play the game by their rules. <laughs> yeah. And that's, and that's, that's what that. the books say. And that's what the book says. Exactly. So, and you're wondering what book. Well, naturally, it's the MECP guide. Because if you want to become a car stereo guy, MECP is a place to start. Okay. That was my ad for MECP. Uh, send the check to me. <laughs> All right, so what we know now, okay, a couple things we know now right off the bat by doing those tests is that we know that we have, that amplifier consumes 292 watts. It also draws, uh, we're just gonna call it 22 amps of current. All right, now on the side of this amplifier it has a 30 amp fuse, because there again, needs a little bit of headroom. How much wattage is this amplifier putting out? We could solve for that. So for that, that was back to this equation right here, which I'll pull that sheet out. That is going to be, all right, so that is going to be volts squared divided by ohms. The one thing we have to keep in mind, though, is it's a four-channel amp. So we need to take volts squared times four divided by the ohm load. The ohm load was four because that was the other we needed, the other number we needed. So now what we want to do is we're going to take 16.48 times 16.48 squared. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to divide that by, I'm sorry, multiply that by four. Then we're going to divide it by four yeah. for the ohm. I know it's- Four it, ohms, four it's just ohms. This, what if we write two ohm, you know, or a half ohm? So it's, you got to make sure you, you do it all the numbers, even though it's silly. All right, so what that's going to give us is 271.6. All right, so now we know the efficiency, now we can figure out the efficiency of the amplifier. Get close. I know, it doesn't matter. So it's drawing or it's consuming 292 watts to produce seven, 272 watts, all right? So what is this telling us? Well, it's telling us that this amplifier is pretty dang efficient. So if we take those two numbers and we divide them amongst themselves, we'll actually get a number that's going to tell us our efficiency. Yeah, so if I take yeah. two, 272 and divide it by 292, that's going to give me the efficiency of the amplifier in this scenario. What's our rubber? Again, that's going to change every time you lower the ohm load. So if this was a two ohm load on this, all these numbers would change. The whole situation would change. The amper draw would go up. That's why, like I said, you have to know the ohm load is so important to the equation to figure it out. But what that's telling us, at the end of the day, a 30 amp fuse or 25 amp fuse would probably be enough. I like to go on the side of a little bigger. Right. So if it's this case 21, I'm gonna round it all the way up to the 10 spot, which is gonna be 30. So I need a 30 amp fuse. Now, this is where this gets fun. I'm the same way, Bobby. I was like, what? I know. Can, can you set it again? Yeah. Okay. Just play along, kids. Just play along. Right here, right here, right here. I know. I'm, I'm gonna just. I'm gonna plug it into this. All right. Hang on. Right here. Yeah, that should be it. Should just come apart. Yep. Plug that into there. Got like it. This. Hopefully it's showing up. Uh, Why would be. it? Yep. Oh, hang on. It's coming. It's doing its thing. It's coming. It's coming. All right. Ready? Yeah. Ooh, so we talk about this all the time. There this is a power wire chart. Yay! Over here is our amperage. Over here is the distance, and this is the size wire you can use. So we know 25 to 30 amps of current is what this thing is going to take. So we look over here, we say 25 to 30 amps. Now yeah. we're going to put this in the back of a pickup truck. 
underneath the seat, which means we're probably going to have, we'll say 10 to 13 feet. So we can come up here and that's going to tell us a 10 gauge. So as long as we run a 10 gauge wire, we will be safe. At least. At least a 10 gauge wire. Yeah. That's the bare minimum we need in order for this amplifier with the amount of power it's consuming in order to function properly. That we're not gonna do that, we're gonna run the A gauge, but... Now, uh, with this power wire, yes. So, if we go a little bit longer, we can still use a 10 gauge. If we go a little bit longer, we immediately need an A gauge. So, if we're buying a standard power wire kit that comes with that 18 feet of power wire, we want an A gauge kit. Because, you know, we might be putting it in the trunk of a car. Now, this chart here, I found this on kicker.com. Okay, under their tech support, I tell you guys all the time, that's where you need to go. Oh, let's go this way. What are we doing? I'm just setting okay. it up better. Now, why this is important is most kits are right here. When you buy a power wire kit, they're between 16 to 19 feet. Yeah. If you look at here, most power wire kits for 4 gauge come with a 120 amp fuse. This is, the, this is why, right here. This is what you're coming with, 16 feet, 4 gauge, Maximum, right there, 105 to 125. Yep. So, now that we've done all that math, let's say we, we did a much bigger amplifier, and we know we're gonna be running, this is where you gotta come back to this chart now that you know, hey, um, I, I'm drawing, uh, let's say 150 amps of current, and I need 16 feet, you're gonna come up and go, crap, I need a two gauge minimum, which means I'm just gonna go up to a zero gauge. So this is why you need to know this stuff. This is when you guys ask this. This is how this is done. Now, so when Correct. we're- it's, 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 uh, it's OFC, definitely. Yeah, this is all for copper. Yes. We're, not, we're not playing with CCA. CCA yeah, yeah, basically yeah, no. double whatever. CCA is double. So if you need an eight gauge- Four gauge. You need a four gauge. If you need a four gauge, you need a zero gauge. But Easy why? To say. Why? Just, just buy OFC. Forget about everything and you're good to go. Uh, Eric, just call Paul at the store. Uh, he will give you all the schedule when you can bring the car. Yes, Mark. And prices yep. and all that stuff, man. So that's why we keep saying the minimum size. This is the minimum you're gonna use, not the maximum. You, Dude, go crazy. I mean, yeah. you could put zero gauge into the amplifier if you wanted. Why not? I mean, that's why they make big wires so that you can go have fun, right? I mean. That's kind of the idea. Go bigger, go, go home. bigger, go home. Exactly. But what we want, this was a question and we get it a lot. Somebody asked Saturday, and I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll give you to Monday. I'm going to put together something because I don't want to just talk about it. I want to, I want to show you what is happening, what an amplifier is doing and just make it fun because that's what we do. Right? Off topic. <laughs> that's goodness. awesome. I like that one. Greg. Um, I was busy watching the court part four. Great series. Oh, no, right. he just said, did you like, Jang, whiskey, vodka. I was drinking Greg. Um, you guys have to drink some of them. Two How runs of zero work? gauge. Yeah, man. Hey, if you're gonna run, you know, ACM 4.1, ACM 4.300, two runs of zero gauge. That's all you need, man. That's all you need. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, if you guys found this helpful, there you go. Uh, you have the idea. You get no? the idea. There, there's, there's a lot you can do, and it's a lot of fun. I love OFC water. CCA wire is, is yes, it is. Uh, very good. Every test we've done, this test was all done with uh, oxygen-free copper. Oxygen. This chart is for oxygen-free copper. Yeah. That math that we've done, yes, you can do it with CCA if you wanted, but Don't. why would you want to? Um, and there again, the results would, would be the same, but this is where that knowing that yeah. information, the last step of actually being able to figure out what you're going to actually put in there for a fuse and power wire. <laughs> Jeff, um, Martin was asking about the playlist for uh, Jeff. He will have the title list today. Well, there you go. I will have the title yeah. list today. Yeah. Uh, and then the nice thing about title is you can just put the list in or open a link to the list and copy all the songs out of it and get them wherever you want. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I usually do when people send me lists of stuff. Thank you, Professor Dean. Hey, you know what? Um, yeah, we want it. You it's know. coming with the CDs. <laughs> Ooh, dang, that was harsh. <laughs> I know. All right, so uh, how do you figure out size of speaker wire? It's the exact same thing. It's the exact, exact, basically the exact same idea there. Um, but like anything else, we'll have a class on that on another day. All so. right, everybody, go to lunch.
All right, I'm gonna take five. I gotta get a drink. <laughs> All right, let's reset. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That was a lot of, that was a lot of, a lot of work. What's up, Bill? Alright, who hates opening a bottle of water to a chunk of ice? That sucks. Yeah. Alright. What's the best way to set your gains? With the DD1. No, oh, I was thinking. I was thinking with the screwdriver. With a what? Screwdriver? With the screwdriver. Ooh, dang. That was good. No. Dude, that was rough. Oh, man. That <laughs> no, was, I'm just thinking. Dude. You've been hanging out with me way too long. I didn't. I, I thought I was just in the room with Haley. Okay. She totally say that. Wow. No. Wow. Like like you say, uh, the DD one. You have the DD one. Yeah, DD one. Get plus. a Lumi. Uh, get the Lumi. We have the Lumi. Um, so, we did a great yeah. video on that um, with the Lumi. How to use the Lumi. Go ahead and check it out. Of course, you can head over to Steve Mead and figure out how to use the DD one. Correct. I think we've done it a million times too. Oh, no CDs, huh? Later wow. this. So. Later this week, once we get, we got one more video on the Accord. So the last video on the Accord will be up um, Wednesday. And that's over, thank God. And um, get that out of the way. Can you use Speedwire with 125 watts per channel? Yeah. There again. It all depends on the crossover. So it depends what you're doing. You can, depending on what you're gonna run. So, like a tweeter. All right, think of it this way. Look at the voice coil tinsel leads of a speaker, all right? How big are they? That's a good indication of what size wire you're gonna need. Can you run, you, like like, like um, Mark keeps saying. Mark? Yeah. Did he run? Yeah. No, well, what I'm saying is the minimum size. There's a minimum and there's a maximum. Minimum is just that. It's the minimum. It's the smallest right. you can do to get the job done. Yeah. Then there's the maximum, which is like, go crazy, have fun. You know, I used to run four gauge wire in a distribution block going to eight gauge wire to power subwoofers, tens. What's up, Justin? When we were sitting at um, the amp training, mm -hmm. Jethro was sitting behind us. Um, Jethro Eason, big SPL guy. Yep. And he's like looking at the new marine wire going, damn, they have four gauge? Yeah. And I was going, yeah, it's awesome. He goes, yeah, but I'm going to use it for something totally different, Dean. Mm -hmm. And I go, <laughs> he goes, yeah. I go, what? He goes, I'm using it for speaker wire. And I was like, I knew it. I'm out of here. Yeah. yeah. So he was excited about dual run four gauge because he was going to use that as speaker wire. And of course, I'm sitting there going, yeah, I've done that before, but I made my own. Like at my house, I made my own home wire coming from my amplifier to my set of morels. It's eight gauge. And I made my own connectors and loom and all that crap because why wouldn't I? <laughs> um, but. Yeah, that's the Yeah, I don't even know where I was going with that. I've already lost track. See, went down the rabbit hole. So, booyah. Okay. All right, so. I bought a DD1 freaking sweet. It is sweet. They are sweet. And I'm not going to lie. Okay, so we have both DD1s. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Wednesday, the Wednesday video that's coming, or Thursday video that's coming out is the, um, we're going to show you how to use the DD1 to gain match. That pi the picture I put up on Instagram with mm -hmm. the Morel amplifier. Yep. Don't get excited. I'm not actually putting the amplifier in my car. We had done the SC430 with the eight channel amp that we turned into five channels. And one of the questions was, is how do you do that? So we we did a video that's showing you and talking to you about the concept of gain matching when you bridge amplifier like that. And that gave us the, the joy of using the new SM, this one, the new SMD which this is the old SMD, this is the new one, which we just found out that this one is number 530 ever made, uh, which is my original. And of course it's signed by Steve on the back, which is really cool. Um, so that one will always be forever in my collection. But this is the new one. That's the new one, yeah. And the cool thing that I like about Inside this Jeremy. is these, the new lights compared to the old lights. You can see the difference in size when we were using this one, I was like, oh <laughs> crap, I need to get another one because I like the lights in this a lot better than I like the lights in this. They, the, the redesign of this, plus they, this is a brand new case. Like when they went to have these made because everyone's buying them, they, they got the ability to design their own case now. So yeah. though it looks similar, it is totally different. See, because this case for the original, you could actually go online and buy, which I have in the past. I have miniature versions, my little red, uh, tone generator that you guys always see me use was supposed to be this size case But I screwed up and bought the small one and I was like I already spent the money so I'm gonna keep it um, But as you can see there are slight 
slight differences in the in the case. This one, the new one, is more square. This is more round. But this case is designed all by them, which is cool. Um, so I like the new one. I like the new one a lot. I, I gotta. I'm gonna probably. And I like the new RCA. Like it screws on. I guess as opposed to it's just you know sunk into the board that was always the problem with this if you tried to use one of those cool rcas that has the big top on it they can you, get you couldn't get it yeah. into there and i was like oh man now it's it's excited it's an audi not an innie all right all right uh yo game match can't you just measure volts ac and match that okay so yes and that's what you're doing but you have to remember you have to know so the purpose of the video which if i give it away now would kind of defeat the purpose of watching the video so Watch the video. You'll have to wait. You'll have to wait. And then you'll go, oh, yeah, I see what he's talking about. Right so here. it's cool. Um, what did he say? Fernando, don't let him drink so much sweet tea. I didn't drink any today. And actually, not, I've been in a bad mood all day. Not so today. this is good. Uh, is the ISMG uh, available again? No, not yet. Not yet. Because they're working on the version 2. He had that there to play with, was the version 2. So what the version 2 is going to add is you'll be able to do a sweep to get the FS. So you won't actually have to do what we're doing hey, now. We'll return it, and we kind of got to look and make sure where, where the ohm load changes. Now you'll just be able to do a sweep, and it'll give you the FS automatically. Boom, there it is. So, yeah, as soon as I get that out, oh, boy. All right, can I run a zero-gauge wire to my second battery and from the battery to my to the amplifier? Yeah. Uh, Four-gauge, both OFC uh, wire. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Uh, where's the deal? There again, minimum minimum maximum the only thing you have to remember when going between that, two batteries is that you have to treat it like two batteries meaning if there's a battery in the front of the car and a battery in the back of the car they tell you that whole 18 inch rule mount the fuse holder as close to the battery as possible that's the that's the rule close as humanly possible the back battery is exactly the same Close as humanly possible, there should be a fuse. And then there needs one. to be a fuse off of that going to your amplifier. Remember, this whole thing, this isn't protecting your amplifier. This is protecting your car from burning to the ground. This fuse underneath the hood is only there to protect your car from going, Bye! I That's miss it? you. Wow. That's it. That's all this is for. If, if you're worried about this fuse underneath your hood blowing to save your amplifier, you're going to be sadly mis just you're going to be sad because this fuse will never blow in time to save your amplifier. It'll never happen. There's a little tiny trace on your board that no. Bye. I like breakers. I like breakers on and dual, dual batteries. batteries. <laughs> I had a bad experience with a breaker. I will never use one okay, again. I got but this. I get the idea. Is there any other way to integrate, integrate a subwoofer into 2016 Mercedes AM with AMG vans? I mean, other than using the Nav TV Zen? Yeah. I mean, that's really the best way to do it is using the Zen module from Zen Nav module. TV. 2002 Toyota Avalon JBL system. Any alternative to the to factory, factory sub, sub rear deck or... other than extremely overpriced Toyota? Yeah, actually, there's two. So if you have that Toyota Avalon sub from the rear deck, you have the Pioneer shell amount, 8 inch. And then JBL also makes, which is really cool. JBL makes a, uh, a subwoofer, and what's cool about their woofer is that it, it dude, it's, it's hard to explain, but the woofer is mounted to like, the basket is almost like a threaded screw, and, and then there's the plate that you mount it to, and then you screw the woofer up or down into the holder to get the right height. Um, we've been trying to get our hands on one so that we could kind of do a review of it, because it is really neat. Oh, other than Nav TV. No, Nav TV is the one. That's the Zen is the truth. Yeah. yeah. And if you <laughs> if you want to talk about anyone that has an integrated into the Brewmeister Mercedes Benz system, that would be McNulty. He went totally crazy and used what four Forzas? I, I think that so was either three more. or four Forzas. Yeah. Um so yeah. good for him. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh now talk about that. Let me let me show you this. What are you gonna show me? You got stuff to show me? No, let me show him. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, show McNulty your finished thing. I Hail from St. Thomas, Virginia. Okay, Virgin Islands. Uh, I have two four-channel amps with six-channel system. One is a center channel, and I use the extra channel one, and without using the DSP. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it, four forces. Yep, see, got it right. 
Um, I have two cho- okay, six channel system, one is a center channel, can I use the extra channel one without using the speaker? Yeah, okay, so there again, a channel will always power a speaker. Feeding it the right information to do what you want might not necessarily do what you're looking for. Can you use it for a center channel? Of course you can use it for a center channel. Will it be a center channel in the fact that it has the right information in order for it to be a center channel? No. Not without DSP. And not without a DSP that has an up mixer built into it that can actually extract this information and this information and do the logarithm it takes to give you the right information here. What you're gonna get is, is essentially left plus right into the center, crossed over and, and plain. That's it. It's not, it's not gonna do anything other than give you something in the center of the dash that makes noise. Is that bad? No. Is it gonna might work for you, might be perfect, exactly what you want. Is it gonna screw up if you, you, well, you don't have time limits. So yeah, go for it. It might actually not be terrible because it'll help to bring the sound stage a little to the passenger side. Uh, audio control Apple, Apple app. Is the RTA okay? Yeah. Go for a run with it, yes. Oh dude, yeah, we use we it all the time. It. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have two of them, we use yeah. them all the time, especially when we're just tuning, like doing a simple tune, where we just have like, uh, 10 minutes, set up, put it in the car, sit down, like we're tuning a radio. We love using that. We've used it to tune all kinds of stuff. Um, how many hours on the Accord? Whoo! So the Accord, was that a two day or a three day? Oh, that was three. No, that was th It was three days. three days. It was three days, but the last day was just the last day was just pick up the car. Yeah. I don't think we yeah. did anything no, the last no. day. Okay, so literally that was two days because we stayed. Well, it was night. three days though because we were here till eleven o'clock each night. That's what I'm saying. And then yeah. the, the third day, the third that day, was just like that was just like sanding, going over and like making that. sure all the panels were clipped. But in working, and working, and that that was yeah, two it was days. twenty. All right, so nine thirty till eleven. Three days. Eleven thirty. Yeah, yeah. eleven thirty one night. It was Twelve. Oh, yeah. Man. So it was a lot of hours. That was, that was a lot of hours. hours. Um, and, and that particular one, a l most of the time when we film, the filming doesn't add to it. And this time when we film, the, the filming added a lot to it because we were using that video for the Installer of the Year video, <laughs> which we thought that we had to explain stuff that apparently we didn't, so we overthought it. Uh, we, we needed to go this big and we went off the charts. Who knew? But hey, at the end of the day, it was a great video for you guys. Exactly. And to me, that was more important, is that while I was filming, I was like, I don't know what it's going to do for us over here, but I know when you guys see it, you're going to be like, you're going to enjoy it. Damn, what was Dean on that night? He's like going really deep With into a lot of stuff. sweet tea. That was a lot of sweet tea that day. Um, um, 2016, like, hang on, 2016 yep. Audi SQ5. I want to integrate amplifiers into my B and O, B and o system. How do I go about How doing can I go? That? Uh, first off, I'd check Nav TV and see if one of the Zen works. If that doesn't work, I'd head over to, to the Helix website and see if uh, they make the, um, if it's a fiber optic system, if they make the interface into that, or Audison, if Audison has it, or Mobridge. What's up, so, Marty Dean? Probably Mobridge and, um, uh, Mobridge and Nav TV. Dude, I gotta tell you, Marty, I am loving this thin Aussie iron. I wish I would have bought these. I'm gonna have to get another one. I gotta get Fernando a green one. I gotta get one. Um, because... These, this, this is the perfect right here. Yeah. This is the perfect size of Aussie iron. Um, what do you need? It's too big? You want to go bigger? Hey. Oh, we're too tight? I don't know. But I'm loving this Aussie iron. Like, it is, is, is phenomenal. AussieIron.com, check it out. AussieIron.com, What's the temperature yeah. over here? Here? I don't know. 80 something, high 80s, 90. I'm I don't know. Right now. I'll, I'll tell you tonight after I get done running, it'll be a million degrees. Um, it's ridiculous. It's uh, I understand that every job depends on a budget, but you could do a video of this is what you could 88. get for X amount of money. Maybe from the basic radio swap to full system swap. Full system swap. So the reason why we don't talk about budget is the main reason we don't talk about budget is for one, we're not the sales guys. So if you want to think about it as good cop, bad cop, Thank you, Marty, for putting up the link. If you guys need an Aussie iron, there you go. Um, is I, you know, when you come to me, I don't 
I, I, if I ask what your budget is, it's because I, I just don't want to overprice you into something you, you can't afford. Um, but, no, I, I get what you're saying. You guys have always <laughs> Yeah, we asked, get the chargers. <laughs> uh, chargers working great. Um, so, we've been... Everyone always asks. So, labor rate here might not be the same labor rate as, let's see, what Marty charges up, up where he is, or what Ada charges over where he's or at, McNulty. or McNulty charges where he's at, or, or uh, Bobby charges, I'm um, not Bobby, but um, yeah. charges in Dallas, and, and Johnny, where Johnny. Johnny charges in Dallas, and whatever, <clears throat> you know, what they charge in California. So, you know, that's where it gets kind of strange. Like, we did a, a Ada, Carlos Ramirez and Elias had a great ta a great class that they taught that I got to be a part of, um, which was, and this was cool. So there was four cars, and they divided the class into four groups. And they were like, okay, you have $10,000 to design a system for this vehicle. So I got a 2019 Land Rover, all right? And they had like a 2019 Toyota. And the whole idea was to use our tools that we have at our access websites uh, forums, groups, okay. friends, you could phone a friend, and design a system to overcome some stupid hurdle, like they're asking about, you know, my Mercedes-Benz, it has this, is this the only solution? Yep. Yeah, it is, and it's expensive. Um, <clears throat> but there again, it, 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 it kind of goes hand in hand with what it is. So like there was a 2019 Toyota to Tundra, and it was like, Honestly, the easiest solution for that it was non-amplified to get good sound out of it is just put a new radio in it. So they went like a halo. Um, there's no solution for the vehicle we had, so we spent. We went with. Bye, Bobby. Thank you. Thanks, Bobby. Um, you know, we went with like VXI JL amplifiers because it was a group thing, and everyone was like, oh, "I like these, and these do that." And I was like, "Oh, cool. okay, works for me. Yeah, yeah sure. perfect." Um, but what's up, Chris? You know, there's never, there's never like, you know. But what they did is they gave us the fixed price of a hundred dollars an hour. And it was like, okay, so that wasn't too crazy. Like it was, it was reasonable. Like hundred bucks an hour is about what you should expect to pay when you get this stuff done. Some are more, some are a little less, yeah. but it's about hundred dollars an hour. The other thing too is that, you know, some people are faster than others. Some people don't take, like a guy came in to me, uh, someone came to me today and they need us to do some service work for them, um, a vendor. They need us to do some service work and like, you know, this should only take you an hour, hour and a half. And I'm like, Maybe doing it your way, it may take you an hour, an hour and a half, but our way, it might take us three hours, okay? Mm -hmm. So, there again, it, it just depends. I mean, like, when we quote our prices, you might be like, oh, my God. It, you're but, good, but you're not that good. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah. there, it's just, it just kind of strange. So, I mean, I don't know what good it would benefit anyone if we just came out and said, this That's is how much bad. it costs, and they go, oh, my God, I don't want to pay that. And it's like, all right, well, fine. You yeah. don't have to, but this is what it costs to do a job like we do. This I, is what we charge. You know, and yeah, then I, don't, I don't know how good that would be. Everything is negotiation. No, it's not. Really, it's not. At the end of the day, our, our install prices are fixed. It's the only thing that's non-negotiable um, because it's, it's what it is. Like, we won't negotiate any pricing. You can do less but you're not gonna get a different price on installation. You could go with less equipment and you'll get a better deal there, yeah. or you could go, but as far as installation, pretty much every shop and everyone I've ever talked to is the one thing that is non-negotiable is install charge. It is what it is, Because yeah, that's exactly. that. It's a fixed price. It doesn't fluctuate. Rent is always the same. Power is pretty much always the same. The lights are the same. My salary is the same. The install charge doesn't change. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, correction, there's always a way to install a system in a van, and it's the same way in every van. Yeah, true. Yeah. Um, All right. What price is the, is the best... price. Okay. Yeah. What are your thoughts on... Uh, installing a budget? Installing a budget products. Amps, Amps etc. Et oh, dude. Trust me. I, uh, I'm late. Five star, what's up? What's the Time topic? Uh, apparently yeah. right now we are talking about uh, budget systems. Budget systems are wonderful. My th and we've we talked about this before. My thought on a budget system is simple. If you're into car audio and you have a thousand bucks, all right, and you're like, hey man, I worked all summer, I have a thousand bucks, I want to get some subs for my car, maybe a new hedge in it. Okay, buy what you can afford, but yeah. get into car audio. Okay, so if you're sitting there going, dude, I want to have. Five thousand dollars worth of stuff in my car, and hey, you know, champagne taste, beer budget type thing. Buy what you can afford to get into car audio, because once you're into car audio, you're hooked. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer in save up, get what you want, but I never did. 
I only say that now because I spent a ton of money buying stupid crap. Oh, yeah. Uh, because it was like, I can afford those, I'm going to buy, buy those. Yeah. So, I mean, don't think I popped out in my first car stereo and I was like, boom, y'all, I got Morel, step back. No, no, it wasn't anything like that. I, my first set of tweeters were a $19 set of peerless tweeters. Uh, my first set of subwoofers were some a brand that doesn't even exist anymore, some 8-inch JSEs, oh, wow. uh, which probably cost me 40 bucks a piece. My first amplifier of note was a uh, Sherwood, two, Sherwood 280, 240, something like that, yeah. you know, that I bought for 100 and something bucks, which at the time was like, oh man, you know, that was like crazy. And that was, you know, almost 30 years ago. Oh, it was 30 years ago. I think it was 30 years ago. <laughs> I bought I bought mine. That was, the first one, that was a bazooka. An yeah. 8-inch yeah, bazooka. Yeah, that was 8-inch Dude, Ooh, I had, man. I bought some, okay, so how silly I am. Yeah. Like, kicker was just, like, the thing. Like, oh, dude, you got kickers? I, I don't, I, you know, I bought something that said kicker on it just because it said kicker on it and thinking that it was just going to hammer. And Detroit. I was like, no, it's it didn't Nick. because it wasn't made to do that. It was like a, a mid-bass. I was like... Yeah. Because uh, we all learn, we all evolve, we all, you know, 30 years ago, things were different. Um, but no, you know, there's, dude, we sell audio pipe, we sell power, power, yeah. power base, what do we say? Um, not power base, power, uh, Planet Audio. Okay. One of our, one of our number one sellers for a long time was a Planet Audio 1000 watt amp thousand with a 15 amp, amp fuse yeah. uh, and a 12 inch woofer. Mm -hmm. uh, and we went through tons of those and it sounded good, it was nice. The only thing that's like... Moved us away from that was when uh, Rockford came out with the P310 and 12. Mm -hmm. Because there again, it says Rockford on it, and it is really good. It is really um, good. I, Definitely I own, sounds, you know, Haley's yeah. been killing hers for two yeah. years now. Uh, Concord cassette player with an Alpine. Dude, wow. my first Alpine 7909 was a thousand bucks. It was the first thing I bought I had to go in debt for. The first loan I ever took out was from my Alpine pullout. Pull out. <laughs> Should have pulled out. Should have yeah. pulled out quicker. Uh, <laughs> how long of a power wire do you need for a uh, 05 Town, Town and Country, Country with an amp all the way in the back? 20 Ooh. feet. Yes. 20 feet, yeah. maybe 22 feet, just, depending just on where you're going to gonna put it. I mean, if you're yeah. going to put it on the side, 20 feet. If you want to go longer, I would probably buy 25 20. feet. Yeah. Uh, let's look over here. 28, okay, so um you got biggest amp you can do is 105 amp fuse at that length of a four gauge so that's that's it that's what you, that's the biggest you can do so you got to make sure your amp is under 105 amps of current draw uh if not you're gonna need to go up to zero gauge what's that christian uh my first oh. sony cd player was 699 700 bucks things there were a go. lot more expensive back then i always find it amusing and people complain yeah more than fair. Um, it's funny. He says uh, uh, he put average install charge, uh -huh. but he put AVE. AVE. Yeah. The first uh, place I worked for was AVE, so it's it's kind of funny. Uh, yeah. Kicker. Okay. Alpine. Sorry. Sony. Alpine. Sony yeah. skipped. Ha ha. Uh, Denon used Sony transports back then, and they skipped. All right. King with arms with the fan was was the bomb. Ooh, yeah, so Kenwood amps with the fan, so they had a power door. So what they did is they took the CD changer mechanism and they put it on the front of the amplifier. So what happened is the amps would go and the fan would be behind it and you could turn them on and off with the radio. And it was controlled from either the bass boost okay. and, the ampl and the head unit, which took too long, or you could just have it auto open when the car turned off, which is what I did. So I had three of them on the back of my truck and they'd all go and as soon as they the car would be like, noise? Oh, who fucking care? Oh, who cares? <laughs> okay. It was cool because I would go, dude, what is that? I'd be like, there you go. my fans. And that's and, the sweetie right there. Yeah, and then in four, four, uh, four of the tens, the purple tens, the purple Kenwood tens, down firing in a box that was shaped like this so that the woofer sat here and were aimed towards the floor that I built myself. I, I used to do custom. Um, our first was an Eclipse. Yeah, Fujitsu, baby. MTX. Uh, Phoenix Gold, there you go. Throwback. It was a Pioneer Stereo and a 600 watt Kenwood uh, pushing two MTX Thunder. So the, the moral of the story is, with everyone telling us all the cool old stuff they used to have, Iowa CDs, there you go. That's CDs? Iowa's a big, Iowa, Iowa's a brand. Is that you all have to start somewhere. 
Okay, it doesn't matter where you start, whether you start with an Iowa, whether you start with an Alpine, Clarion back in the day, an Eclipse, mm -hmm. we all have to start somewhere. And, and it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter where you started, it's where you end up, okay? Because I started with some real crappy stuff. Yeah. But I ended up with six iron amplifiers, uh, a Mac Daddy full built crazy Clarion head unit with a bunch of Morel speakers going, yeah. I'm still, yeah, just I'm still waiting for mine. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the, the, you, you just got to start somewhere. So, yeah. it, you know, dude, those RP amplifiers from SCAR, I mean, we sell a ton of those things. Yeah. yeah. And why not? I mean, it's a good amp for the money, uh, and it gets you into the stuff. And, oh, you know, I still have yeah. my ADS. Ooh, ADS. ADS was reasonably and priced, man. Them. Yeah, those, they had some real reasonably priced ADS? amps. ADS? What is the so, ADS? any of you guys that work for Crutchfield, because I know there's a couple of you guys in here that work at Crutchfield. Um, you gotta understand something about Crutchfield. I thought it was funny. One of them reached out to me when we were talking. And, oh, wow, that's a nice deck. That, the Kenwood Z919. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Um, so the guy texted me and says, yeah, I work at Crutchfield. I said, so is that like working at the Playboy Mansion? Because to me, when I, was, when I was younger, Crutchfield was like... <sighs> Everything in there? Give me a sock. I'll be back. Um, yeah. Yeah, oh, dude, because that was it. That was like, oh, man. So when he said he worked at Crutchfield, I was like, so you work at the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> that is so cool. Um, but, yeah, I know some of you old guys around here will feel the same way. It's like, dude, that was car audio porn, man. That was like that was like getting the, um, what's that uh, place in the mall where they sell lingerie? Uh, Victoria's Secret? Yeah, it was like getting the Victoria's Secrets catalog. You know, when it came, it was like, oh, I know what I'm doing for the next two hours. Bye. Okay, sure. <laughs> what uh, is your opinion about the Hyphonics amplifiers? The new ones? I mean, they're not, they're, they're good amplifiers. They're not bad. They do well. I mean, you like know. he said, you know, as soon as you get into the car audio, yeah, then you get I mean, better and better and better. So, so, you know, there's good, better, best in everything. And there's good, better, best amongst everything. So, you know, you have like Victoria's Secret of. Yeah, the secret. Secret. Oh, so, Victor. all right, so let's put it in perspective, all right? So this little guy right here, this is the Forza, all right? This is the Forza 8-channel uh, DSP amplifier. It's 85 by 4? 85 by 4. 85 by 8, sorry. 85 by 8's at 4 ohm, mm -hmm. 150 by 8 at 2 ohm. That's what this guy is. Now, it's got an 8-channel DSP or an 8.1-channel DSP in the in the sense that it does eight channels as well as one output for a subwoofer. Estimated retail price on this guy is fifteen hundred dollars. What? Okay, it's fifteen hundred bucks for this bad boy. All right, so let's put that in a, in a perspective. When you're looking at a high phonics amplifier or like a scar or um, anyone in that category, you can get a fifteen hundred watt amplifier for about five or six hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. But it's in a different league than that amplifier. Okay, different, not even different close. purpose. Yeah, no, no, it's not even a close thing. It's a different type of application. It's a right. different type of customer. It's a different type of everything. So there is a lot of stuff. Hey, Darren, there is a lot of things to consider. And I always, I always find it discouraging when someone like automatically discounts something because it's expensive. Because like the, the, like the I first drive, thing they hear is yeah. like it's. Uh, 1200 watts over here and it's 80 well, 85 watts. I mean, I drive a Camaro. Okay. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah, in I know that. Okay. Uh, it's it's a sports car, two doors. Ooh. Okay. And it, it's okay. I mean, I'm I I'm Send on Send it to me. <laughs> Heck no, baby. That Ooh. one's mine. My baby. That's going to go in the and the um in the Camaro at some point. Go at some point in the Camaro for about a month, yeah. um, and then come back out because we got the Arc Audio sitting right there. It's got to go back. And then come back out. And then, and then back. put so, something there else. There yeah. Goes. So very similar amplifier. It's there again. This is the Arc Audio amplifier. Okay. So the purpose of this whole where we're going with this is that. And the Alpine over there. Oh shush. <laughs> so, um, yeah, exactly. That's where I was going, Sean. Right, Thank you for gosh. getting there way quicker than me. I have a Camaro, it's, it's what Chevy would consider a sports car. Granted, the Corvette is a better sports car, but even better than that is a Lamborghini, okay? So we can't take anything away from the Lamborghini because it costs a half million dollars or whatever. It's, it's, the car, it's like, oh damn, we're not gonna take anything away from it. We're not gonna be like, man, I ain't paying that for that when I can have a brand new mid-engine uh, Chevy Corvette. <laughs> 
If someone, no, you're, you're, it's a freaking Lamborghini. Okay, so this would be like the car on the front. This would be the Lamborghini. So it's for a different application, different customer. So, you know, when you're looking at that Planet Audio and then you're looking at that Hyphonics, yeah, Hyphonics is better. But then, no, there's something better than that. And then there's something better than that. And then there's something better than that. So, there. Uh, All right. Car Lab is a myth. Oh, whatever. All right, I have this one. Let's let's read this one. He typed it like two times, I think. Okay. Craig. What's your view on having to run all the same brand? Oh, geez. Yes. All <laughs> the same speakers brand speakers in your car. In your car. I'm that kind of person. It has to be all the same. Uh, I just replace my rear doors speakers out of the Memphis and I just front. Found out I have kicker. In the front. Front doors. Now I'm changing the front doors out with Memphis on Wednesday. All right, so, okay. Question is, uh, yeah, Dean, who won the arc box? Nobody won the arc box yet. We're, we're still yet. haven't given it away yet. So we, I got to figure out how, how to give, because it's got to go to an arc fan. So I have to figure out some way to get you arc fans to tell me something so that I can pick one of you and yep. get it to you. Yep, so, because yep. uh, I don't want it and I want to get rid of it. Um, but, yeah. so we don't need to pull it out. Um, well, I'm going to pull it out. It's right here. Yeah, so we need to get rid of that and all the little swag pieces inside yeah. of it. Okay, so, so the question is, the question is, are you crazy, anal retentive, over picky, whatever you want to call it, that the front speakers have to match the back speakers? No, you're not, and there's actually a reason for that. Now, depending on who you talk to in the audio world, there's a term. I was always told it was timber. I'm timber, but apparently it's called timbre. And what that is, is that's the, that the speakers have to have the same acoustic sound signature. So, for example, if you have a set of K2 components up front, you wouldn't want to put an access in the rear if it's going to be on the same listening plane. Meaning, if it's just there for effect down in the corner, we're barely going to hear it, then yeah, okay, you could kind of get away with it. But if it's going to be a crucial part of the system, meaning you actually want rear fill, you need to go with a K2 to match. So that the tweeter, the mid-range, the crossover points, the acoustic signature of the speaker matches this guy up here. Where that becomes really important is in the home audio field where you have um, two exterior speakers and then let's say you had two Bang & Olsen and then you had a Corel center channel and they don't match. Sound comes across and does this and goes like this and then like this again. So you get some weird effect. Same is true with the rear side panels. So yeah, Having speakers that match is important to me uh, because I'm that guy. It's not Tinder. You need, you need a friend. Timber. I always call it Timber. Yeah. Tinder. So I always call it Timber too, but somebody corrected me and says, it's not pronounced that. Uh, whatever. So, yeah. Is there anything wrong with that? No, totally. Um, I'm also like you in that I'm not going to put a set of speakers that don't match front and rear. I just can't do it. Uh, you know, it's like wearing your underwear backwards or something. It just doesn't work out. Got to match, are you? Uh, yes, <laughs> got to match. You're a psychopath. It's a simple, no question. Yeah. Now, when it comes, okay. So really, where the where it really gets silly is that the amplifiers have to match. I I, I cannot do a system where the, the series of the amplifiers are different. So if like you have like an Alpine four channel one series and you buy a subwoofer Alpine in another series. That or anything like that. I'm out. Okay. Yeah. That was the problem with the uh, with the uh, F F uh, the yeah the F150 the Raptor because we went with the audio control stuff and then we went with the Scar subamp. I just no. had to close my eyes. Yeah. But this is not about you know, idea. Uh, I know anyone in Chicago that uses. No, no, no. I'm okay. sorry. This one. Uh, you, you should, should give, give the R box to someone who's want to build a box. A subwoofer yeah. box out of it. Yeah. Why yeah, not? I don't know. Um, uh, all right, phase polarity. Remember? Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, ota potato, potato. Potato. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. They I got it. They have to match. They, they have, have to match. match. They have to match. Yeah, uh, yeah my, my home, home system, system is PSP. Ooh, nice stuff. Um, 
My home system is morale. I can't, you know, the other night I said I should take a picture of it because I was thinking about it. I was listening to it. And right now it sucks because the TV is kind of sitting in front of it because we bought the TV that was way too big and I still have to get stands for the speakers. And 90 inch TV. Yeah, it's stupid huge. Haley and I went way too big on that. Yeah, we won that <laughs> Dude, one. Haley and I, TV shopping was a bad idea because <laughs> we're just like, this is about you don't even measure well, nothing. Or, no, because we're just like, all right, this is where we sit on the couch. This is about the right distance. Yeah, that's right. I don't know. See, like, that one looks small. But it's bigger than what we have. But yeah, that one looks really good, though. All right, what do you think? Should we get the big one? Yeah, we should get the big one, Dad. Let's get the big one. Let's get the big yeah. one. As I'm, as I'm riding in the car underneath the TV box, oh, laying really? down flat, because there's no <laughs> room for me in the car, and I wasn't going to come back and have him pick me up. I like my foot totally white trash. Have my foot holding the TV with the back of the car open. Because nice. only like, you know, it's just right around the corner to get to the house. That's totally and, yeah. Um, yeah. A video that, right there. Yeah, oh, it would have been silly. And then uh, we get it home, and we're like, we went a little too big. Can't even see the wall behind it. And Sue's just like, I told you. All right, let's see. Okay. Uh, uh, do you really need 4-gauge since Rockford Power Mini amps are using 8-gauge? No. And there again, power chart distance. This is, this is what we were talking about. So the Rockford Minis, we run 8 gauge. Uh, if we're doing two, we run four gauge. So if you're at 13 to 16 feet, and those little guys don't draw any current, 10 gauge, 8 gauge, perfectly acceptable. All right, I have a four gauge OFC cable powering my amps, my amps 2009. size 2009. Should I replace it to the OFC wire? No. Due to the age. No. Okay. Does copper age is a more of the question. The easiest way to see if your copper is aging is to just look, uh, pop the hood and look there, okay, at the fuse holder. So what'll happen is, is the ox, you'll start to have oxygen come through the, the clear mm -hmm. and you should be able to see it. So if you go down the line, if you have clear and you can see nice shiny, but then as you're looking at hot, the Tony. tips, if it's dark and dingy, you could be starting to get oxidation and corrosion in there. You could, not necessarily, you could. Um, it might only just be the outside. But that would be the only time you'd ever replace it. And really the only thing you'd have to do would be try to find an extra two inches, cut it, put a new ring terminal or a new connection on it, and then you're done. The corrosion part is bad. That's why it's called oxygen free, is so that they, they keep the oxygen out of it and keep it from corroding. So if it's not corroding, there's no reason to replace it. Nothing, nothing bad there. A TV can never be too big. That was kind of my thought. But now that I have to redo my whole living room, in hindsight, I probably should have gone a little smaller. Ah, watching from Northern Maine. Hey. Hey, what's up? I hey. know you're not Canadian, but you're really close to those guys. Uh, hey, what's a good four volts uh, single, single din deck? deck? Kenwood. Well, Kenwood's five volt. Um, I prefer, okay, so like if I had to go out, buy, there's two single din decks I'd buy. Uh, one is the Pioneer 8800. If I have to have a single-day deck, or if I just want the ultimate of ultimate, obviously I'm buying the Sony GS9. That's it. Um, um, and one's okay. practical and one's not. Uh, what does it say? Uh, Both sets are being run off deck power at the moment. When, when I go to put an amp on them, should I run Memphis amp? No. No, no, no. It doesn't, doesn't matter. The amp, okay. If you're at, okay. Not every manufacturer makes everything that goes from beginning to end. They try, but they don't. So what does that mean? Let's let's look at that for in perspective for a second. So JL doesn't make car radios. And I say that only because they make marine radios, but they make speakers, they make amplifiers, they make subwoofers. So from the radio back, if you really wanted to, you could do everything JL. Rockford, same way. Kicker, same way. Um, Audison actually has a, almost like a head unit with the, with the bit play or whatever it's called so that that's actually almost a head unit so you could do a full da system all the way back if you want it there hertz on the other hand not so lucky you could dsp back um but some of these other smaller companies like audio frog mm -hmm. um audio frog only makes speakers. speakers they don't make amplifiers yet they're going to but not yet but not yet yeah. and it, so no one would ever buy audio frog if everything had to match audio control doesn't make speakers they just make amplifiers and dsps correct 
I'm I'm still buying those. Yeah. So um, you don't have to buy you know, a Memphis amplifier. No, and like Focal speakers yeah. or Focal makes amplifiers, but they don't make amplifiers that are big enough to power all their speakers. Like they don't make an amp to power a set of K2s or a set of Utopia amps. So you'd have to go. That's why everyone goes Moscone. You know. But there again. So no, you, you don't have to. It's okay. Uh, Pioneer can be all Pioneer. And Kenwood can be all Kenwood, and Sony can be all Sony, and JVC, God. and yeah. the list goes on. But should it is more of the question. Do you want it to be? No. I want to buy the best of every category. So I want to buy my the best radio I can have, which mm -hmm. right now is the 996. Um, I want the best processor I can get my hands on. I want the best speakers, Morel, that I can put in my car, and I want the best amplifiers to, to power those. Right now it's Morel because, well... I have to use them because they gave them to me. But is that the best amplifier for the situation? Right now it is because they gave me enough power to do what I want. I was like, yeah. you know, I was like, well, I'm not gonna turn it away. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's AB class, big power. Yeah, yeah, I'll take it. How many four channels? A lot. There's three of them. Three four channels. Three four channels. Yeah. Ooh, oh, baby. why not? Mm -hmm. Three four but, channels but, in but one month. But then again, awesome. you know, and then and then they tease me with the subwoofer and going, hey, we make this amazing subwoofer with a 5.1 inch voice call. <laughs> Okay, I'll Dang. take that. I'm out. You know, but there again, is there is there? A, it depends what I wanted to do. Now, if I wanted to go super bass crazy, I might be calling Shane up at Scar, going, "Hey man, that ZVX, just saying, oh, I got crazy. I need that 2,000 watts. You know, calling Rockford up saying, I need that 2,500.1. You know, with the banging meters. So, you know, there. Yeah, buy what works for you. Yeah, you don't need to buy Honda tires for you, of course. You can rock. Yeah. <laughs> uh, see you on Saturday. Right. Thanks, Jason. See you, Jason. Oh, dang, Jason, keeper you of the time. Yeah. Holy cow, it has been an hour. Correct. That is amazing, guys. Well, hey, thanks for tuning in today on this wonderful. We hope you guys learned something. Uh, DNF Tool Drawers is a place you can find all the good tools. Patreon is a place you can go to support the show. Teespring, Teespring slash door slash five stars is a place you can get the cool shirts. This one. And don't forget to get the playlist. If Jeff puts it up, I will put a link to it in this episode of this show on yeah. YouTube tomorrow. If he doesn't and it's not there, we could talk about it again on Saturday. Correct. Oh, goody. Maybe uh -huh. he'll get it done. And with that, you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. We'll see you back here Saturday on YouTube, and we'll see you tomorrow on Instagram. Yes. Because we didn't do it today because we didn't have anything to talk about. No. No, we didn't. We're and we're not, we've decided that if we don't have anything to talk about or there's anything fun well, to do, you. we're just going to move on to the next day because... You know, we don't. We don't just want to make it torture. Exactly. So we'll we'll play with that some more. If we have something fun to talk about tomorrow, we'll be on there and we'll be ready for you guys. You All guys, right, guys. Have a wonderful. See you guys later. Bye.